this definitely feels like the right thing to do. And by taking these areas out of production, it's a great habitat for a whole range of farmland birds. You know, there's still quite a lot of seeds on some of these at the moment, which fall off and the birds can get. A lot of those birds have got young chicks in, in the spring, particularly with grey partridges. It's important that a lot of those birds actually rely on having insect life for the at least the first couple of weeks of, of a chick's life. So if they haven't got that plentiful supply of insects, you know, they're, they're not going to survive. We've had a discussion about cost benefit of stewardship as opposed to cropping the land. And it is quite marginal at the moment. You know, these things, especially in small plots, actually take quite a lot of management time to do. But I, I've done it and I'm keen to do it. It feels like the right thing to do. And hopefully it's the right thing to do for the environment, but also for our crops growing in, in the fields as well. For example, on the grass margin beside here, if we've got lots of beneficial insects in there, hopefully that's encouraging the right predators that when we have aphids in our crop, for example, they, they're there ready to go out and have their feast on, on some of those. We have in the region of getting on for probably a thousand acres across the whole farming area which is in some form of habitat. So that's creation of flower meadows, wild bird mixes. We've created our own wetlands so we've basically turned a part of our you know, little corner of our farm back into a reed bed, you know, what the ground was like before it was drained. We look at different wildlife and indicators. Our hair numbers have exploded our farmland bird diversity. So we did a count back in 2014, I think we counted three different species. Um, our last year, our big farmland bird count with the GWCT, uh, we had about eight different species. So in a few years, very quickly, and a lot of it is not necessarily nesting habitat, because obviously we've got a large area to go, and, to go. It's more around the food and the insects through the nesting period, so the, the protein aspect, and then the seeds over winter. So in this field, we've actually started to put in strips six metres wide across the middle of the field. And they're actually every fourth tram line. And they're actually to deliver biodiversity out to the middle of the field. We've got lots of habitat around the outside, but what we're really finding is beside those habitat margins, particularly the pollinating elements, we're seeing yield benefits beside there. So if I can get that pollinator and predatory insect across the middle of my fields, they can travel out and eat my pests, the slugs. They can pollinate better across the field. And actually what we could do in a few years time, if the policy allows, we can actually put some trees along here and have fruit trees growing in the fields as well. So it gives us huge opportunity. And we need to think about the farming system and for me in a different way of how do I reduce my costs and my inputs and how do I use pollinators and predatory insects and other things in my farming system. So when I have my winter beans in here, my oil seed rape, any flowering crop, I'm actually increasing the life and the habitat for those pollinators between the flowering plants, you know, between my, before my crop needs them. And also the predatory insects are here before I need them. So the insects that eat my aphids that may be grown in this winter bar spring barley that we planted beside, as the aphid numbers come up, the, pet, the predators will come out of these margins and straight into the field. Without these, the aphid numbers will go up and we've got to get the predatory insects to come from the far end of the field to come and munch them. And it's, for me, it's about having this balance. And as a farmer, I don't want to use insecticides. I'm trying to deliver habitat that will do that pest management tool for me. In a, probably a few weeks' time, when the weather gets a little colder, you'll walk along here and this will absolutely roll with yellowhammers, linnets, sparrows, because they love the hedge and they'll float in and out. If you lived in a town or in a house, you have your bird table in your back garden and you get the joy from that. I have a lot larger bird table and I feed that We've actually put in over 250 kilos a week of seed out to feed the wildlife we have around. And actually it's a real pleasure to go and enjoy it and just think about it. At the bottom end there, I actually put a bench down so I can actually take my dog for a walk if I'm a walk in the afternoon, just sit down and enjoy.